Located in the southeast region of the United States and known for the Everglades, its beaches, alligators, and retirees, Florida is a popular destination for tourism. But what you might be surprised to learn is that for many years, Florida has been on the Census Bureau's list of top 10 fastest growing states. The Sunshine State is currently ranked third most populous in the United States as of 2023. And in 2022, Florida surpassed Idaho as the state growing at the fastest pace in the country. Between 2021 and 2022, Florida's population grew by a whopping 1.9%, reaching over 22.2 million people living there. For reference, that's more than double Sweden's population and is slightly higher than Syria's population. Since the 2020 census, Florida's population grew by 706,597 people. That means Florida averages an increase of 8,014 people weekly, or over 1,100 new people each day. Florida consistently is ranked as a top destination for Americans relocating to another state. So why are so many people moving to Florida? What impacts does this massive population influx have on the Sunshine State? Historically, Florida has been a place that has attracted many visitors and residents for centuries. In the decades after the Civil War, early developers in Florida took steps to turn the inhospitable swampland ridden with mosquitoes and alligators into hotels, homesteads, and farms. Promises of wealth, land, and leisure attracted many people to the Sunshine State, with tales of citrus fruits and sugar as well as sunny, sandy beaches attracting many people to Florida's shores, and much of the credit for this dramatic change can be attributed to one man. In the 1880s, a rich man named Hamilton Diston, from Philadelphia, created the Okeechobee Land Company, which developed a system of canals that drained the Everglades through an effort called the Land Reclamation. Distant brought 4 million acres of land deemed by the state to be uninhabitable swampland for $1 million and a promise to transform it. At that time, the New York Times called the transaction the largest purchase of land ever made by a single person in the world. Distin's efforts prompted Florida's first real estate boom as he advertised to people in Europe and all over the world that Florida was inexhaustibly rich and a luxurious place to live. People like Distin began selling their land to railroads, farmers, and developers after inland drainage of the Everglades made the land hospitable. Farmers were able to plant sugar, citrus, and vegetables, and railroad pioneers began expanding railroads throughout the southern parts of Florida, making the state more accessible for tourism and new residents. But things haven't always been so sunny. Over the years, there have been numerous devastating hurricanes destroying Florida's infrastructure and development in many coastal areas. In 1926, for instance, a hurricane hit Miami and killed over 390 people. The resulting property damage totaled over $76 million. Just two years later, in 1928, a hurricane killed over 2,500 people, most of whom were black agricultural workers in the farming town of Belle Glade, which was washed away by the storm. In 1935, a storm hit on Labor Day and destroyed the civilian conservation camps that were located in the Florida Keys. Many of the people impacted by the storm were World War I veterans and other workers who were building a highway to link mainland Florida to Key West. In spite of the destruction from the series of storms, close to 3 million people arrived between 1940 and 1960. Beyond this, the population growth continued and naturally, many hurricanes destroyed Floridan infrastructure and properties. In 1992, a Category 5 storm called Hurricane Andrew hit South Florida, and other hurricanes hit Florida again in 2004. So it begs the question, why do so many people move to Florida when there's such a history of brutal storms and property damage? Many people have been drawn to Florida in recent years, but this is not a new phenomenon. Since the end of the Second World War, beginning in 1946, Florida's population growth has always been positive. In the 1950s, as air conditioning became more common in warmer parts of the country, Florida's annual population growth reached an average of 6%, reaching 8% in 1956 and 1957. This was the last time that Florida was the fastest growing state until now. During that time, Florida greatly outpaced the national population growth rate which averaged between 1.5 and 2% each year. To have a population growth of 8% annually equates to a population doubling about every nine years. In other words, Florida's population was growing extremely rapidly. In the 1960s, there was a housing boom that drew people to Florida's sunshine, beaches, and nearby ocean. 
The relatively low cost of living in Florida as a result of the housing boom, coupled with Florida's natural beauty and laid-back lifestyle, have all attracted people to the state for much of Florida's history. The population growth during the 60s was as high as 3.3% annually, much higher than the 1.9% rate today. In the COVID-19 era, another housing boom again attracted many people to Florida for the same major reasons. The baby boom era marked a significant growth in Florida's population between the years 1946 and 1964. But that's not all. The Sunshine State's population growth remained double the national average at 3% between the years 1960 and 1989, even as both the U.S. and Florida population rates declined after the baby boom. Florida's population growth continued slowing into the early 2000s when Florida's population rate reached as low as 1.7, though it still outpaced the national average for population growth, which was around 1% each year. This trend continued into the 2010s when national growth got as low as 0.5% annually, while Florida's population growth remained between 1% and 2%. That's more than double the national average, showing that even as Florida's population growth rates declined, its population has steadily continued to climb. The housing boom in Florida during the coronavirus pandemic also played a role in attracting people to the Sunshine State. Since 1946, Florida's population has grown by a factor of nine, with its current population largely exceeding its 1946 population of 2,440,000. This is no small feat. Florida is clearly one of the fastest growing states in the nation. You might be wondering, with such high rates of population growth over the years, why hadn't Florida been ranked as having the highest growth rate in the country since 1957, at least until 2022? To put it simply, the answer is Nevada. Nevada's population has grown from 143,000 people in 1946 to over 3 million in 2022. This means Nevada's 2022 population is 22 times that of its population in 1946. As a result, Nevada took the top spot in terms of fastest growing states for 36 of the 76 years since 1946. Other fastest growing states in the post-war era, including Idaho, Utah, Arizona, North Dakota, and Alaska, have also rivaled Florida for the top spot. Florida's population is clearly growing very rapidly, but where are all these people coming from? One thing that is for sure is the rapid rate of population growth in Florida is not coming from higher birth rates. We know this because Florida's birth to death rate, called the rate of national increase, is negative. In 2022, the rate stood negative 40,216, which means that over 40,000 more people died than were born in Florida. Florida's rate of natural increase is higher than any other state in the United States. Some researchers call this the Margaritaville effect, which refers to the fact that 21% of Florida's population is over the age of 65, so the state has a large retiree population. This means that more than 40,000 people would have to move to Florida to total a net zero population growth in the Sunshine State. Clearly a significant amount of people are moving to Florida, or else Florida's population growth would not be so high. In terms of population density, Florida ranks highly among other states. In fact, with a surface area of over 65,000 square miles and estimates of 353.4 people per square mile, Florida is ranked as the eighth most densely populated state in the United States. Florida is becoming densely populated and potentially crowded as more people have moved to the Sunshine State. When it comes to numeric increases in population growth, Florida is one of the top contenders as well. The only state with greater numeric gains than Florida in 2022 is Texas. From all of this data, one thing is clear. Florida has grown rapidly over the past three quarters of a century. But what does this growth actually mean for the state? And where is it coming from? Historically, once it had achieved statehood, some of the earliest people to move to Florida were entrepreneurs and farmers looking to profit off the cheap restored swampland in the luxurious climate of Florida. Many Europeans were attracted to Florida by wealthy landowners like Hamilton Diston and others, seeking opportunities to build railroads, start farms, and own high-quality property. After World War II, the advent of widespread air conditioning prompted more and more people to move to Florida, 
In fact, many of the millions of people who moved to Florida in the mid-20th century were World War II veterans who had trained in South Florida. But beyond that, millions of people have immigrated from the Caribbean and Latin America to Florida, especially as it has become easier to obtain transportation to the peninsula. Specifically, millions of people from countries including Haiti, Cuba, and more recently Venezuela and Central America have moved to Florida. Political persecution and economic instability are particularly common reasons why many Latin American and Caribbean immigrants move to the Sunshine State. In general, Florida's accessibility and proximity to many Latin American and Caribbean countries make it a common waypoint for many immigrants. Another major population of Floridan residents are known as snowbirds. Snowbirds are temporary residents of Florida who spend only the winter months in the Sunshine State. Often these people live in northern states where the winters are harsher and colder than in Florida. Snowbirds will return to their home when the climate warms up in their home states. These part-time residents are often unfazed by intense tropical storms and the ensuing devastating property loss, determined to visit the Sunshine State. As a result, scientists have predicted that snowbirds with properties impacted by storms will opt to stay in different parts of the state, even in the case of severe and destructive storms. Many reports after Hurricane Ian hit Florida included stories of snowbirds returning to Florida from Michigan and other states to make repairs on their affected properties and to help neighbors whose properties were impacted by the storms. In 2021, more people moved to Florida than any other state in the country, according to census data. If you had to guess which state is losing the most people to Florida, you may assume it's one of Florida's neighbors like Georgia or Alabama. But surprisingly, more people moved from New York to Florida than any other state, at over 91,000 people relocating there. Georgia takes the number two spot, followed by California, New Jersey, and Illinois. But almost twice as many people moved from a foreign country to Florida. Though older retirees are often associated with Florida's rising population rate, Many trends suggest that younger people are driving the growth in Florida's population in recent years. The ability to work remotely during and following the coronavirus pandemic has attracted many people in younger generations. There's also been a lot more flexibility in recent years to work from all over the country, especially with such widespread use of Zoom, Slack, Microsoft Teams, and other online communication platforms. Wealthy millennials are among the most common relocators to Florida, moving from even more unaffordable places like New York City and California. Other new arrivals to Florida include conservative-leaning people from liberal states like California and New York, seeking a more like-minded state, as well as investors seeking opportunities to invest in rental properties. However, for all the people moving to Florida, there are relatively few people leaving the state. Many Floridans who relocate simply move to another part of the state, as a result, the state's population is continuously growing, despite a limited capacity in terms of infrastructure, public services, and housing. So we know a lot of people are moving into Florida, but why are they moving there? Historically, the primary reasons people give for moving to Florida include the weather and a job. Family and taxes are cited as key factors motivating a move to Florida, but there's even more reasons why someone would choose to move. Let's dig into those reasons and better understand what makes Florida so attractive to so many people. Florida's nickname gives us a hint. Florida has warm and balmy winters with average temperatures in January and February, averaging around 75 degrees Fahrenheit. This means that Florida has what many consider to be ideal beach weather all year long, especially as many people move from Northern states like New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Illinois, and others. A break from brutal winters can be a motivating reason to move to Florida. Most of the state has subtropical climate, where winters are generally mild and temperatures in summer range from 88 to 99 degrees Fahrenheit, though the heat index can sometimes reach over 103 degrees. The southern tip of Florida is a tropical climate, where rainfall and thunderstorms are common. However, the thunderstorms are often seen as a small price to pay for Florida's beautiful warm weather and beaches, which are certainly one of the big reasons people move there. The Florida Everglades, the largest tropical wilderness east of the Mississippi River, attracts over a million people every year. On top of that, as a peninsula with 1,197 miles of coastline, Florida's many beaches are attractive to those looking to soak up the sun and enjoy year-round warm weather. Florida's beaches are often thought to be some of the best beaches in the United States, with soft sand, clear water, and abundant biodiversity, including seashells, starfish, 
manatees, and fish. Surfing, snorkeling, and swimming are all very popular in many Florida beaches, especially at Cocoa Beach, which many claim to be the surfing capital of the United States. The waves at Cocoa Beach can get as tall as 10 feet high, but these natural attractions are not the only thing pulling millions of visitors and move-ins to Florida. Amusement parks like Disney World and Universal in Orlando, as well as cruise ships departing from the peninsula's coast, contribute to the tourism in the state. At the same time, many beaches are close to piers, boardwalks, towns, and parks for people to enjoy. Florida's beautiful and quaint historic beach towns draw many people to its shores. Florida is also full of golf courses and parks that attract many retirees looking to stay active and engaged in their communities. Between the amusement parks that attract many tourists and locals alike, and the beaches with numerous recreational activities available, Florida is a place where anyone can relax, unwind, and have fun, which is attractive to many people. And because Florida can appeal to anyone, it's also become one of the most culturally diverse states in the nation. Between snowbirds and locals, as well as people from all walks of life and from all over the world who have moved to Florida, the state has people of every age, religion, and background imaginable. This can attract many people looking for a culturally rich and diverse place to live. Some people are attracted to Florida as a result of political atmosphere of the Sunshine State. One major incentive to move to Florida is the lack of income tax. Florida is one of only nine states in the U.S. that opts not to tax income. The other states that don't have a state income tax include Alaska, Nevada, New Hampshire, South Dakota, Tennessee, Texas, Washington, and Wyoming. Though you still have to file for federal income tax, the lack of a state income tax is very appealing to many people, especially wealthy people, looking to avoid paying taxes. Florida is also known for having fewer regulations in general, especially on businesses, which may be alluring for entrepreneurs. Another big political motivator for moving to Florida during the time of the coronavirus pandemic were regulations on COVID-19. While many states around the country mandated lockdowns and social distancing, Florida's mandates were relatively flexible. Some people who moved to Florida during this time have cited the lax regulations during the pandemic to be a motivating factor in moving to the Sunshine State. In general, Florida is appealing to many more conservative-leaning people seeking a warm, beautiful place to live. The regulations and policies advanced by lawmakers in Florida are politically divisive and controversial, and so Florida politics draw many people who agree with these policies to the Sunshine State. At the same time, jobs and economic opportunity are growing in Florida in some respects. In 2022, a major hedge fund titan named Ken Griffin announced that he was relocating his $50 billion hedge fund, Citadel, from Chicago to Miami, Florida. The hedge fund has been leasing space in Florida's tallest office building called Southeast Financial Center, but also has spent over $300 million on lots of future sites, with plans to build a 1,000-foot skyscraper. Miami's mayor reported that the city has gained $2.5 trillion in assets under management over the past two years as a result of this migration. Further, several large corporations such as Burger King, Circle K, Royal Caribbean International, Hard Rock Cafe, and Spirit Airlines all have their headquarters in Florida, which just goes to show how diverse and business-friendly Florida's environment and economy really are. Beyond this, Florida has a diverse economy that is suitable for people in many different industries, including tourism, aerospace and aviation, clean technology, pharmaceutical and medical manufacturing, and healthcare. At the same time, Florida is known for defense and homeland security, technology, and financial services. The state is also the seventh largest exporter in the United States, exporting aircraft parts, phones, machines, and circuits, to name a few. Many people seeking economic opportunity and jobs in these sectors may be particularly attracted to Florida. Further, with COVID-19, we saw many jobs becoming more flexible and oftentimes remote. Increased availability of remote jobs has allowed many Americans to live wherever they want, and Florida has become attractive to many people looking for change. The feasibility of moving to Florida has become a reality for many people across the country. Beyond this, housing and cost of living can be very affordable in many parts of Florida, though some cities like Miami are very expensive. Goods and services, healthcare, and housing in Florida are all reported to be below the national average. Despite all of the pros, however, there are some who have come to regret their decision moving to the Sunshine State. 
In 2021, one real estate agent estimated that between 40 and 50% of his buyers leave Florida within a few years of relocating to the state. While many people enjoy their week-long vacations in Florida, he explained, Disney World and beaches are not representative of actual life in Florida. Though the weather is warm and the beaches are beautiful, Florida isn't always the paradise people imagine it to be. Between November 2020 and November 2021, the median home value in Florida rose by 22% compared to the growth of 12% nationwide. The increased demand for housing has driven prices up as more and more people move to the Sunshine State and will only continue to escalate. Not only that, but property taxes are higher than in many other states, perhaps making up for the lack of state income tax. Despite high property taxes, Florida is notorious for low-paying jobs. Wages in Florida are considerably lower than in other states because employers may feel that they can pay staff less as a result of the lack of a state income tax. CBS named Florida the least affordable place to live in 2022, based on a 2019 study that showed the cost of living in Florida was higher than the wages paid. While housing and some other expenses may be lower than in other states, it seems that the corresponding wages throughout Florida are not always livable. Another reason that many people come to regret moving to Florida is the heat and severe weather. Florida is hot and humid year-round, which may not be familiar to people from more temperate climates. While January and February average temperatures around 75 degrees, the rest of the year can be unbearably hot, which can take some getting used to. Staying inside with air conditioning can be necessary to stay safe and healthy. For some people, it seems that weather is a deal breaker after moving to Florida, with the unbearable heat and the mental health impacts that can accompany staying inside for so much of the year. Therefore, Florida's warm weather may not be as ideal and comfortable as one might expect, and it certainly isn't for everyone. Tropical storms and hurricanes are another factor that contribute to people regretting their move to Florida. Between severe property damage and threats to livelihood, Florida is especially prone to hurricanes. The storms are another factor that may take Florida transplants by surprise after moving to the Sunshine State. Further, as climate change escalates, insurance premiums are projected to rise for Florida properties because many homes in South Florida are more vulnerable to rising sea levels and climate change. It's becoming increasingly more expensive to insure these properties. Thus, insurance premiums rising due to climate change are another cost of moving to Florida. Beyond environmental issues like tropical storms and climate change, many people from major liberal metropolis areas like New York City and cities in California find themselves struggling with unfriendly neighbors. Florida is a red state, and a lot of Floridans are skeptical of transplants from these places, fearing that local politics may become more left-leaning. The NIMBY, not in my backyard, movement is prominent in Florida, and so sometimes people who move to Florida may feel that they are not welcomed by locals. All of these factors contribute to a Florida that perhaps is not as ideal and relaxing as one might expect. As you can tell, the influx of people in Florida may leave some people feeling dissatisfied, but the significance of these figures extend beyond satisfaction. So what are the impacts of so many people moving to the Sunshine State? How will Florida fare if this population growth persists? Florida is known for its beautiful beaches, nature, and laid-back way of life. However, the new, unsustainable influx in population growth over the past few years is reason for concern. With so many people moving to Florida, the state has also become very crowded. This has translated into something everybody hates, traffic. In Miami-Dade County, this is a particularly large issue, and despite efforts to add more lanes and new exits, construction on the roads has only led to worse traffic. The county is 2,341 miles, but had a population per square mile of 1,422 people in 2020, which was an increase of 8% since 2010. In Miami itself, the infrastructure is even more overcrowded, with 12,285 people per square mile as of 2020. The traffic and congestion in Florida will only get worse as more and more people move to Florida, a place with already overburdened infrastructure. Beyond that, the traffic causes increased pollution and poor air quality, which exacerbates climate change and sea level rise that impacts the lives of millions of Floridans and people around the world. Clearly, many aspects of Florida that draw so many people to move to the state 
are in jeopardy as a result of increased demand for housing, resources, and visiting Florida's beaches. In Florida, a large number of people, whether new to the state or having moved to Florida in the 20th century, live in places that were formerly forests or natural spaces that were clear-cut to accommodate the growing population. The rapid migration of people to the Sunshine State has a big impact on Florida's ecosystems through environmental destruction, urban sprawl, and continuous development. Research suggests that in the early 21st century, 860 acres of Florida forests and farmlands were lost to development each day. One new study suggests that about a million undeveloped acres could be paved over in less than 20 years if Florida's population continues to grow. As more people move to the state, the rural lands still intact in Florida will likely be developed to accommodate the growing demand for housing, goods, and other commodities. Until now, Florida has been relatively lucky, with most sprawl occurring in places already developed with neighborhoods, housing, and shopping centers. However, as developed landscapes continue to grow, this will spread into undeveloped rural areas that conservationists have been working to protect. Another study indicates that by 2070, Florida is at risk of losing 5 million acres of farms and land to development and sprawl. Beyond all of this, a million acres of wetlands and protected areas in Florida's coastal region are expected to be lost to sea level rise as climate change continues to intensify. Despite the risks of sea level rise, new arrivals to Florida are especially drawn to the coastal regions. As climate change causes sea level rise, erosion, and increased incidence of detrimental tropical storms, the 76% of Floridans living in coastal communities are especially vulnerable to destruction of property, loss of life, and an unsustainable way of life. In many parts of Florida's coasts, localities are rebuilding newer and bigger buildings in the places where previous storms hit. But as tropical storms become more frequent, the destruction and property damage continue to grow. Hurricane Ian is a good example of one of the most notable and recent hurricanes that impacted Florida's infrastructure and society, taking place in September of 2022. The storm reached Florida's southwest shore with winds as high as 150 miles per hour. These winds, along with torrential rains and an 18-foot storm surge, destroyed many communities and killed over 120 people. Many bridges connecting the coast to islands flooded and collapsed, leaving some of Florida's barrier islands isolated from the mainland in the wake of the storm. Hurricane Ian is believed to be one of the most economically devastating storms in history. And yet, people continue flocking to Florida, despite how overcrowded and vulnerable the state's infrastructure continues to be. With much of the housing supply endangered by climate change and tropical storms, Florida's model of coastal living and beach life may be insufficient to support the massive influx of people moving to the state. Though the growth in Florida's population can be positive for its economy, political power, and reputation in some ways, the fate of the rapidly growing state may be in danger. At first, more people meant more jobs and opportunities in a state that was formerly sparsely populated and that had significant land. Under those conditions, every new resident would lower the cost of providing basic services to all Floridans. Now though, as the state has become more populated, its infrastructure may soon reach its carrying capacity. With a growing population, higher demand for products and services, as well as housing, place strains on farmland and forests that are developed, as well as public servants like police and school systems. Eventually, the cost of services may not be lowered by growth, but instead raised. The implications for continued growth, both economically and environmentally, could be detrimental to Florida's future. Not only that, with so many baby boomers and retirees moving to Florida, and the natural increase in children as many people move to the Sunshine State, the population of working-age people in Florida may be lower, limiting the workforce's capacity to meet demand for education, goods and services, healthcare, housing, and other necessities. At the same time, the growing rate of aging adults will require increased healthcare to be provided, and increasing births means more young people needing access to school. This means that the state will need more doctors and teachers to maintain the same ratios of doctors to patients and teachers to students as the population grows. Further, as people have begun to live longer on average and as pandemics like the coronavirus become more common, the extent of healthcare needs may continue to grow in Florida. But regardless of the many risks and the grim outlook of Florida's continued growth, people continue to move to the Sunshine State. Demographers project that the growth will persist in the coming years, possibly increasing from 22 million to 25 million residents within a decade. Will Florida be able to handle the increasing population that seems almost ceaseless? 
What will be the fate of Florida's remaining preserved farmlands and wildlife? Can Florida's infrastructure withstand an increasing population and destructive hurricanes? The outlook is not promising, but time will only tell.